Letting go is the hardest part Trying to find peace of mind To seize the day I'm living my life Working on me Doing things right Leading not to my own understanding But I'm following God's Blueprint for single. Hey, hey, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I am your host, Valerie Luttrell, and this is the Single, Save, and Dating TV show. I've got such a special treat for us tonight. We have, are so blessed to have Pastor Vicki Flournoy. Pastor Flournoy, how are you doing this evening? Good evening, <laughs> Valerie. I am wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a blessing to be here with you tonight. You are so welcome. You know, I uh, when I thought about um, tonight's topic, which is God's leading lady, uh, it was so important for me to uh, select someone who uh, is seen in the community, who is respected in the community, community who serves in a leadership capacity, and do it as a single. And as I continue to pray and ask God to give me the right person, God said you. And so I'm so glad that you took us up on this opportunity to just discuss, um, because this is, this is something that um, there are a lot of women who um, are leaders uh, in the Lord's church and who are very well known in the community. And so I, I want to speak to those, uh, those viewers tonight, because I can only imagine imagine what dating is like for you. I mean, obviously we are uh, in a very interesting time uh, in our world today and dating might not be on our forefront. It is more or less living, but yet and still, uh, I want to just talk about that whole single save uh, in dating approach as it pertains to God's leading lady. And so, um, you know, uh, when you're thinking about relationships, right? For us singles, God is really wanting us to come to him first, right? Would you agree with that? I absolutely agree. Yeah. That's one of my primary focuses right now, um, making sure that my relationship with God is correct. And I know that if that's right, then my relationship with others will come into fruition. Yes. And in our focus, you know, God has, uh, he gives us the opportunity to shift our focus. And, and when you're, when your focus is shifted, and I think sometimes uh, God will, for me anyway, and that could be for some others that are watching, but when God really wants your attention, he starts to do things in your life. <laughs> he, he does things in your life that might not be so favorable. And when you have those, those um, opportunities, because that's what I want to call them, when you have those opportunities, it's almost like God is waving the flag. Hey, I'm here, <laughs> you know, come to me. And so uh, I, 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 we all go through many different uh, things in life. There are many different experiences that we have, but to me, those experiences are really an opportunity for you to see God in that situation. And the first question that should be asked is, God, what is it that you desire for me to learn from this? What is, what is the lesson? You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. I can absolutely relate to that. And I will say that is the approach that we should all take. Mm -hmm. God does not make any mistakes. And if he's allowed something to happen, it's for us to find out what it is in that particular situation God wants us to glean from or learn from. Mm -hmm. We should never let an episode or a situation go unnoticed. We, we make sure that we take the time to find out what it is mm -hmm. that God wants me to see in this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I was telling someone the other day, um, you know, sometimes we, 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 we are accustomed to uh, blaming everything on the devil. <laughs> You know, uh, the devil caused this or the devil caused that. And, 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 you know, God had to show me that the devil is employed by him in, in the story of Job, right? The devil was going to and fro seeking who he might devour. And it was God that said, have you considered my servant Job? Yeah. So he put him on a mission. He put Job in the limelight to say, Hey, you know, he's faithful. He's got integrity. Let's go press him. 
So it's not a matter of, uh, and, and I, and I say, I, I put myself in that situation because I used to blame everything on the devil. <laughs> but when you think about who sent him, then it puts things in a, in a different perspective for you to where when you have those tests and trials that will come, you have to put in your mind, okay, this is a test. And, 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 and this test God is sending for me to, to, I need to either, I'm going to either pass it or I'm going to fail it. And, and, and once I know that I can pass that test, I understand that when difficulties come, especially in relationships, because that is, that is, you know, the person that's closest to you, you know, it, it will hit you the, the hardest. Right. And so I have to understand, I had to get to a place to know that this test is coming because God is desiring me to go higher. Yes, yes, I agree. And, you know, I look at it as if I'm a parent, you know, just like mm -hmm. we do with our children. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to rear our children in a way that when we send them out in the world, that they will remember those lessons learned and they will represent us in all they do. Absolutely. And so the same thing with our, our spiritual journey. I believe that God instills in us what he would have us to know and be able to do. And you are correct. The devil can't do anything that God does not allow him to do. <laughs> And so with that in mind, God allows us to go out in the world, allows us to interact and gives us the opportunity to be who he created us to be. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Even, even as a single pastor Flanoy, um, you know, many a times and I can, I can only imagine uh, as a single, you know, you are uh, in the community, you, um, you, you go to different churches and, and you preach, you teach um, and you, you basically uphold the mantle in front of everybody. Mostly, you know, people that know you, they know that you are a pastor and, and that could look a little bit different on the dating scene because you are very well known. Like, like some of us might be able to uh, uh, go to a restaurant, uh, go to the movies and not be identified. Uh, but for you, uh, because of the light that God uh, has put on you amongst his people, how does, what does that look like for you? And we might not be talking about today, but uh, when you were actively dating or uh, what have you, because today is just, a, it's a totally different beast for dating. Uh, but what, what did that look like for you? Well, you know, the thing is to be who I am, no matter where I am. And so mm -hmm. with that in mind, when meeting someone, um, mm -hmm. I absolutely want them to understand that I am a lover of God. I, I, I serve God in all I do and everything mm -hmm. I do honors him. And that includes dating. Yeah. And one of the things I just am in a season, and that's one of the things that I do carry into other seasons is mm -hmm. I, I don't play the the games um yeah. one of the things i i tell you know guys when you know asking me out is you know I'm, I'm not one you know for the the one night stand or the or the happy time you know there are some understandings that you know there are some people that you're not necessarily looking you know for any type of extended relationship with um mm -hmm. i'm not that type of person that will go choose to go on those type dates you know right. if i'm gonna go on a date um and call it a date Mm -hmm. then um, we need to understand that, you know, this is something that we are getting to know each other on. Um, right. First off, making sure that it is a Christian, you know, who understands that I do, you know, work in ministry and mm -hmm. God is first, you know, in everything mm -hmm. I do. And so with that understanding mm -hmm. before moving, you know, any further, mm -hmm. I need to know from him that he understands that I have a, a call to keep, a, a charge to keep I have, a Listen. God to glorify. And so that does come first. And we both can achieve our goals in Christ if we have that understanding from the beginning. Absolutely. And, and you brought up a very good point because this is something that I, I constantly uh, share with others is that when you are dating, first of all, it is important for you to share with that individual, hey, this is the call that's on my life. This is what I do. I am a child of God. And you know what, Pastor Flournoy? I'm going to tell you that most of the time when that is given, they flee. <laughs> the ones that don't have good intention, right? We can't be so um, um, uh, remiss that we don't share that part of our life with that individual because it is a very important piece that will help you to shift the ones who aren't who aren't serious about what it is that you're doing for the Lord. Yes, yes, that's the goal. Because that's that's the trajectory. 
-hmm. Yeah, that sets the trajectory for the expectations that someone might have on or when they see you, you know, sometimes people put together, you know, all sorts of expectations or they have certain desires, but out the gate, if you say, listen, I'm a child of God and, and, and I operate in integrity, if he's, if he has the right intentions, he will date you. If he does not, he'll go to the next. And I, I am one for going to the next. <laughs> if, I agree. You know, yeah. Yeah. Because it saves so much time. We are, you know, uh, uh, we are, uh, especially in a world right now to where everything, everything, we have a limited time here on earth. And so we have to position our minds not to waste time. And part of you not wasting time, part of you uh, saving yourself from heartbreak and heartache is dating with a purpose and making, just like you make your request for anything else, you make your request known to God, but also let that individual know this is where I stand. And, and because you you might have some that, that hear all of that and, and will still uh, try to stick around to see if you could be swayed or not, right? But here again, that's a test for you. Yes. <laughs> We have some who are determined, you know, they, they feel that they have the ability, especially mm -hmm. when they have, you know, in mind who they want to have, they feel that they mm -hmm. have the ability to wear us down, you know, yeah. uh, to the point where we do, you know, go out with them or, or, or just allow them, you know, to, to have their way with us. But I think it is important to be clear mm -hmm. about who we are and not get ourselves in a position. That's one of the things I'm all so careful of mm -hmm. um, is never getting myself in a position, mm -hmm. you know, where I have to, to exit, you know, right or exit left, you know, I, I make sure that it is a person that I trust mm -hmm. and who will honor, you know, that when I say, okay, this is, you know, as far as we go for a date mm -hmm. and we'll respect that. And when, yeah. when, you know, we, we have someone that would try and attempt to go beyond those boundaries, mm -hmm. that's not a person that we need to date. It's, it's that integrity piece that is so important that no matter whether you are a leader in ministry, whether you are um, um, just a, a church goer or you just believe in God, your integrity says so much about you because we can't live a life that um, is, is we have to be pleasing to God um, and, and, and we have to get outside of, well, I show up the right way, but then late at night, when the mood is right, I'm doing something else. Because as we know, what happens in the dark will come to light. So, you know, we, we can't fool God. So, you know, outside of people, we can't fool God. So we can't show up one way and, and choose to do something different. You know what I mean? Yes, I always tell people, you know, my goal is to honor God in all I do. And that mm -hmm. includes dating. And yeah. so even as I am dating, I'm asking myself throughout the date, am I honoring God? You know, and so that means that he can't come, you know, to my, my home after we go out to dinner, you know, and, and I'm or, or I'm not going to go, you know, to his home, especially mm -hmm. in those early stages of dating. Yes. You know, once we've, you know, been dating for a while and mm -hmm. it's clear, you know, between us where our boundaries are, that's different. But certainly those initial dates, you know, we shouldn't go anywhere close to, you know, hanging out in each other's home. Homes. You know, you just can't put yourself in a position where mm -hmm. you are tempted. You know, we, we, we think we're strong, but if we put ourselves in the right predicament, it's so easy, you know, to, to fall prey. And so it's advisable oh, yeah. not to even put ourselves in those particular yeah. situations. That's that you bring up a very good point uh, because uh, God will all, if we are in that temptation's point, God will always give us a way of escape. So when I hear people say, oh, it just happened. No, 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 no. Nothing just happens uh, because I believe it happens in your mind first. And because it happens in your mind, if you're ready to go out on a date and, and you're going on a date and your, your intentions aren't pure, you're choosing a certain attire or you're choosing a certain uh, perfume. You, you are, when we were out here in the world, we were doing whatever was clever to do uh, or not clever <laughs> or doing whatever we wanted to do. We knew what we wanted to happen for the evening. And so there is, you have the ability to choose where you go. And if you know that you're not strong enough, you are, you are nobody has to tell you whether you're strong or not. Right. Uh, and, and, and I always say, don't let the devil fool you. Right. Don't, don't get fooled, but you have to um, um, be, be not 
non-remissive of, of, of what could potentially happen. And if you don't want that to happen, you must stray from it. And so making that decision as to where you choose to go, because like you said, you know, uh, Lights can be dim, candle could be lit, music could be playing. And it, it is, it's easier to say no over the phone than it is if that is an area that you're weak in, right? So we, we all know our strengths and our weaknesses and we have to take a self-assessment of ourselves. Don't fool you. You can't fool you. You, you know who you are uh, in front of others. You know who you are behind closed doors. And so we have to always uh, put ourselves in that position because uh, I'll tell you when I uh, really got serious about the Lord and when I say that, um, not just saying that I was saved, but really have after accepting God into my heart and really, um, um, knowing that he is the head of my life and operating in that integrity and operating the way in which I know God designed me to be, the lights of my path were different. There was, it was no longer, you know, doing this. When you, when you get to a certain place in God, it doesn't matter how people see you. You have to see you the way God sees you. And when you see yourself that way, your, your activities and what you get involved in, it shows up. Even the people that you choose to be around, it shows up. Because I, I, I was always told when I was younger that birds of a feather flock together. Yes. <laughs> right? So so we, we have to be mindful of um, those uh, of things that can, can tempt you. Uh, you know, people that you're around, what you're listening to, what you're watching. Um, it, it's important to just guard those eye gates, the ear gates and all that stuff and, and not put yourself in a position where you know you can be weak. So we're, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about God's leading lady and what that means for all of us. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You know, uh, Pastor Flanoy, you know, I, um, as, as a single and, and, and on this journey working for the Lord, um, you know, it, it, it occurred to me um, that there was a certain call for things that I needed to do. And I'm not a pastor. I'm not, not claiming to be an evangelist or minister or any of those things, but I believe that God puts us all to work. We all, he gave us hands to work. Uh, um, and sometimes, you know, and I, I, I think that uh, there's a lot of things that um, I do for the community, for different members within our community, but it's not something that's announced, <laughs> you know, it's not something, Hey, look at me, I'm giving to the poor, I'm feeding the homeless, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And, and, and in the book, of Matthews, I believe it, it talks about, you know, not announcing, uh, you know, what you're doing for the homeless. We see that quite a bit, but um, I had to stand in correction uh, of that scripture because I used to believe that it was okay um, to actually do that and just show uh, what you're doing in the community. I think there's a certain, um, I believe there's a certain degree to it. You know, if it's an organization or something like that, I think that's, that stands differently, but independently, you know, oh, here I am giving to the homeless, you know, in the book of Matthews, it talks about uh, not announcing those things. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. And you're 
absolutely right. Um, you are correct that it's okay to share that you are providing ministry so that others know that you provide those services. Mm -hmm. But certainly when you do something for someone, you know, individually, mm -hmm. um, you, of course, you wouldn't want to embarrass them. But the godly thing to do is do it from your heart, not mm -hmm. seeking recognition and just the way of, you know God and how he does it. Mm -hmm. He does recognize us, you know, for, for the work we do, but we should not seek recognition That's in our right. giving and providing service. Right. Because when you give in secret, God will reward you openly. Yes, he will. And that's in the word. You, when you give in secret and you do in secret, God will reward you openly. And, and you brought up a good point about the heart. You know, you do it from the heart with no expectations for anyone to give you praise about what you did or even for the individual that you gave to. You don't even have a level of expectation for them. Those that are in the community and, and God impresses it upon your heart uh, to give, do that. Because I, I always say, we never know. We one day might be homeless. You know, how do, how do we not know that uh, this is a servant of the Lord? How do we not know? Uh, we might not know what the prayers of that person is. I've had many encounters uh, in that regard where we don't know what the prayer is for that person that they pray to God. All we know is I must be obedient to the voice of the Lord when I hear it. Yes, I agree. You mentioned um, in a prior conversation, you know, um, Job as the example and, mm -hmm. and how God, you know, asked, you know, have you considered my servant Job? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I often will ask myself, you know, in different situations, mm -hmm. is that an opportunity where God, you know, asks, you know, have you considered my servant Vicki? Or in your case, have you considered my servant Valerie? Yeah. You know, and so I want to be able to stand, you know, and, and honor God, you know, when that opportunity comes where right. I'm faced with some Thing to represent him. And you never know, you know, there was no announcement to Job. Hey, Job, you know, <laughs> I'm going to test you. I'm going to, you know, unleash Satan to test you. You know, there was no announcement, you uh -huh. know, Job did not see it coming and neither will we, those opportunities that God is sending our way to make a difference. We just have to make sure that we're doing the right thing uh -huh. at the right time so uh -huh. that we can give God glory. That's right. And, you know, um, helping others is such a big part of discipleship. It is, it is such a huge portion because God uses us to bless his people. However you find your way, I think that we all have uh, certain gifts. Uh, we all have certain abilities. We're actually doing God's work. So when I extend my hand, to me, I'm doing God's work. And, and you know, God, if God blesses you to be a blessing, we should be that, you know, and, and, and do it with uh, no expectations, but even if we don't have expectations, God still honors your obedience. He honors the obedience and he'll give you back good health, good wealth, whatever that is he feels that he needs to give you. Um, he'll do that just for you extending your hand uh, to those in need. Um, in the book of Proverbs uh, 31, uh, it says, she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Bye -bye. It's in the word of God. My, my. It's in the word of God. So uh, sometimes, you know, I even, I've asked myself before, God, why did you bless me with this? Why did you, you know, why did you bless me with that? And I, I, a prophet told me once, she said, God blesses you because he trusts you. Yes. He trusts that you will do the right thing with that which he has given you. Because yes. sometimes we, we, we could, you know, take everything for ourselves and, and be selfish and knowing we hear God speak in certain opportunities and we choose not to do it for our own self, you know, oh Lord, I got this bill and Lord, I got, God knows you got that bill. God, God knows what you have to do, but sometimes he wants to see, like you said, there's, there's no announcement, <laughs> but he wants to know that if I give you this, I can trust you with giving you more. Yes. And, you know, when you mention need, you know, the needy, oftentimes we think of it as being financial or, or hungry. But you know mm -hmm. what? Sometimes people need love. That's sometimes it. people need support. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people just need your prayers and, and right. someone to touch and agree with them. And I've found mm -hmm. that oftentimes those opportunities come from people who have wronged me, you know, who I would choose not to have anything to do with, you know, anymore. But yet the opportunity comes. They are in need. 
need, mm -hmm. you know, of, of my help. And mm -hmm. I'm just so glad to be in a position where God has softened my heart and put yeah. me, you know, in a place where I'm able to offer that unconditional love, you Absolutely. know, without any expectations where Absolutely. if I do have someone in need that I can make a difference. That's right. That's right. A very, very good point. Um, it's not always financial. Somebody can just need a hug. Mm -hmm. If God whispers in your ear and tells you to give that person a hug, will you do it? Yes. Will you do it? We never know what uh, others stand in the need of. We, we, we never know that. And that's why, like I said, it's so important to be obedient to that voice. We have to uh, be inclined to hear God speak, uh, which is why we can't you know, have a lot of declutter coming in. So, but when you are in a certain place in God, you are inclined to the voice of the Lord and you know to do exactly what he tells you to do. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it, but do exactly what God has ordained you to do. That's um, what goes this year, discerning the voice of God. Oh, I, I want to clearly discern his voice. That's one of my goals this year. I'm you know, amazed that you touched on that. I love it. I love it because, you know, this, you know, you think about, you know, everything that we are uh, seeing in the world today, our every move, we should hearken to the voice of the Lord. Out every move, when you hear that inner spirit speak, if your mind, tell, when you put out in your mind to leave for the day, I know that I go left, but if that spirit says go right, you better be obedient. So we have to, we have to know that God is ordering our steps. He is, so whether we understand why he doesn't want us to do something, what do we understand why he wants us to do something? We have to know that our steps are ordered by the Lord. And because we trust him, no matter what God says, it's okay with me. <laughs> it's yeah, okay. Yeah. We don't know what he's saving us from. We don't know what he's uh, uh, preventing from us. So we just really have to be mindful of what, what God says in this hour. Mm -hmm. uh, we oftentimes don't realize that when we see things, it mm -hmm. really allows us to, to have a, an opportunity to see them for what they are. Yes. And I think that's one of the things we experienced over these past few months. It's almost mm -hmm. like being in the nightclub and then they say at, at four o'clock in the morning, they turn the lights on and, <laughs> and the fine chick you know, you get to see what she really looks like. It yes. really allowed us to see, you mm -hmm. know, um, clearly, you know, some of the people, um, how they navigated circumstances. Mm -hmm. It allowed us to demonstrate our faith. Yes. And it allowed us to see who were, we were aligned with, you mm -hmm. know, people who I thought, you know, were, were, understanding, you know, the, the Bible, the way, you know, I understand it, you mm -hmm. know, you, you you should understand it the way it's written. You know, yeah. uh, there, there's no mystery about the word of God. That's and, right. you know, you shouldn't add to it, take from it. And no. so I was able to, to see the, the differences in, you know, trying to make the word and yeah. what, you know, into yeah. what people wanted it to be versus what it was. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. But we do know who we serve and we do know who is in charge. So no matter what this year may bring, no matter what this month may bring, no matter what this week may bring, no matter what this day may bring, we know who is in charge and who we should put our trust in. Pastor Flanoy, I thank you so very much for joining me this evening. This has been such a blessing. And I pray that the viewers have also been blessed. And I pray and bid you all Godspeed. And just remember to listen to God's voice. You all take care. Letting go is the hardest part. Trying to find peace of mind.